Hi, in this video, we're going to cover the questions related to labor costing. I'll share the question to you. You can try out the questions. Then we'll discuss the answers for the question. Yes. Right. The first question is from 2007, where the requirements are pay sheet and the ledger accounts related to pay sheet. So this is a pay sheet format. So I'm going to divide the columns based on the question. So in this question, we have to check the additional information and find how many columns you're going to have in earnings and deduction. Right. So if we see the earning, if you check the earning part, so we have the basic salary which is 100 rupees per hour. So I'm not doing the additional information or adjustments. I'm just trying to figure out how many columns I have to prepare for the earnings and direction, right? So the basic salary, then we have overtime. So those are the two things we do have under earnings, I think, right? Then deduction. So deduction, they have EPF. So EPF, they have mentioned 10 and 15 percentage, 10 percentage for the employee and 15 percentage for the employer. Then they have mentioned wages advance. It means they have given some advance and they are deducting from each month's salary, right? And uh, then loan instrument. Then they have housing loan. So the deduction they do have four. So this column has to be divide, divided into five. Why? Because we have four here plus total. And earnings column will be divided into three. We have two here and the gross salary or the total. Right? So basic overtime and gross. Then deduction we have five. Right? The net and EPF ETF in this question, I think we don't have ETF, right? So we'll come this. But still, in the format, we do have ETF. Why? Because we are having a standard format. Fine. Right. Then you have to find this. So that is one of the important part in this chapter. Because recent papers they have tested uh, kind of different scenarios to find the basic overtime and some other allowances, right? Fine. So if you take if you take the first addition information, they mentioned weekdays 40 hours per week at a normal rate 100. So uh, then they said weekend 200 per, sorry, the, then they said overtime uh, payment 150 per weekday and 200 per weekend, right? So we have to find the basic and overtime. We do have two employees. Nimal and Sarat. So we have to find for Nimal first. Basic and overtime. Right. So basic is 40 hours. He worked all four days or for all four weeks. Sorry. So 40 into 4 into 100. Right. So how much? 16. Then overtime. So overtime we do have two. He is working on weekdays, additional hours, and he is working on weekends as well. So weekdays, how many hours he worked additionally? He worked for 10 hours, right? Uh, mean first one, first week he worked, he worked five hours, and second week again he worked five hours additionally, right? Yeah. So 10 hours and the payment is 150, mean 1,500. Then weekend he worked how many hours? 6, 4 and 15. 6, 4 and 5, so 15. 15 into 200, so total is 3,000. So 4,500. So the salary for Nimal is how much? 20,500. Likewise, we have to find for Sarat as well. So Sarat basic. So he worked, yeah, again, 
40 into 4 into 100 16 how many hours 14 hours into 150 which is 2100 then he worked weekends only 4 hours right so 4 into 200 800 so 2900 total is 18000 so that kind of calculation you should know how to do right so this is not about accounting this is about the basic mathematic calculation and you should know to find the basic and overtime or any other additional you know earnings the employees earn fine so 16000 here basic sarat also the basic is 16 and overtime is 4500 and 2900 do we need to show overtime for weekdays and weekend separately no because overtime is a common field or common column we going to have for both right so that is not an issue so 2500 and here 18 right then second addition information they mentioned about the epf and they clearly mentioned the overtime payment is not included for the epf calculation therefore we going to take only the basic so epf this is 10 percent therefore 1600 again 1600 That is fifteen percent. Is ten percent? Is thousand six hundred? Five percent? Eight hundred? Therefore, fifteen percent is percentage is two thousand four hundred. Right? Then the wages advance. So wages advance. So they mentioned wages advance advance for Nimal five thousand. Then installment loan installment loan installment. Loan instrument for Nimal again, that is thousand. Then they mentioned uh, housing loan, so housing loan for Sarat three thousand. So total deduction is how much? Six thousand seven thousand six hundred, and here four thousand six hundred. There, then you have to find the net. So net is twelve thousand nine hundred and fourteen thousand three hundred. Fine. So this is the pay sheet, and you have to find the total. When you are finding the total from which column you had add, you had add from the gross. Why gross? Because other columns are not needed to do other questions, right? So how much? Thirty-nine four hundred, three thousand two hundred, five thousand, thousand, three thousand, and twelve thousand two hundred, twenty-seven two hundred, and four thousand. So this is the first requirement of the question. So this is the basic pay sheet question. Recently they have tested. I think. Uh, in 2016 or somewhere to prepare the pay sheet with some additional columns so like basic and they have they have mentioned about the output basis salary as well output basis uh, what do you call earnings as well in that question right so you should know to have find the earnings first so if you could be able to do that then other part the other things are very straightforward why because the calculation they will mention on which one On basic or gross like that, and other deduction also they have to give in the question itself. Fine. So the calculation part is little bit tricky. So you have to spend some time and find the answers and you know find the correct answer and fill the pay sheet. Right. The second requirement is the ledger accounts related to pay sheet. So you should know the double entry for the each transaction related to the pay sheet rules. Right. So first one is gross salary. So what's the double entry for the gross salary? Salary and wages account debit, salary and wages control account credit. Then EPF contribution of employees. So these are deduction from the employees, right? So what are the double entry for that? Salary control account debit, EPF payable credit, salary control account debit, wages advance credit, salary control account debit, loan advance, loan instalment credit, salary control account debit, uh, what you call house loan credit. Then what you call net? Net we do have two options. One is paid by cash, other one is payable. So if it is paid by cash, what's the double entry? 
salary account account debit cash credit if it is not paid salary account account debit salary payable account credit then epf contribution we don't have any epf contribution in the question so epf contribution of employer what's a double entry epf expense account debit epf payable account credit so these entries you should know right in this question we don't have any transaction to transfer epf to the specific authority fine so t accounts or the general uh, you know ledger account related to the transactions so first one is gross salary so double entry is salary salary account debit salary control credit so this is salary control or you can write salary and wages control this is salary account so salary account debit 39400 i will write salary control account and here salary 39 4 second entry ep of contribution of employee double entry is what salary control account debit payable ep of payable uh, 3200 so this one and ep of payable credit i would write salary control 3200 then wages advance 5000 so wages advance so i'll write prepare t account for wages advance so again salary control 5000 then we have loan installment so loan installment 1000 So prepare T account for loan installment. No loan, employee account. So credit, salary control. Then we have home or housing loan. So again housing loan account. And amount is three thousand. So housing loan. So credit three thousand. I'll try something. Right. Fine. So in the last adjustment, they mentioned the company's advice to deduct, uh, you know, Sarah's monthly monthly house loan instalment rupees three thousand and pay it to Sahana Bank. So pay it to Sahana Bank is not not needed for the question because what we need is how much we are deducting from the salary. Right. So this is this they deduct in the credit side. mean they deducted from the salary and salary control account debit housing loan account credit 3000 later they will pay to the specific bank so did they mention whether they paid whether they paid to the sahana bank no so when they are paying what's the double entry this account debit and they are paying by cash cash account credit so that is depend that depends on the question if they say this is deducted and pay back to specific a specific uh, bank or some other person then you have to record uh, accordingly right so here debit and bank you are paying by cash or so cash or bank account credit fine so this is fine then net so what they mentioned about net did they mention anything about net whether they paid or like they are paying in next month like that no so if they don't say anything what what we have to do so if they don't say anything you have to take this as payable right so you have to close this account 39400 39400 net salary we know 27200 which supposed to be transferred to the salary payable account right so salary control how much 27 200 so when they will pay this they will pay this in next month right so that is important why because they are recently testing the balance of salary payable account so balance of salary payable account for an example this balance so let's say let's say if we are close in this right we don't have any transaction we are not paying in this month so we are close in this 27200 brought forward 27200 so this 27200 means what brought forward mean next month if the opening balance right in this question march opening balance of salary payable is 27200 and they will pay in march right 
so there's there's a question a very recent paper where they gave the opening balance of salary payable therefore you should understand what does that mean so if they give a opening balance for salary payable that means last month salary is not paid so they will clearly mention in the additional information of adjustment saying the salary will be paid in the following month means current month salary will be paid in next month likewise last month salary will be paid in next, this month means there should be a balance in salary payable account why because the last month salary is not paid yet so that part is very important these are the small points we should understand in this specific chapter right fine then EPF contribution of employer double entry is EPF expense debit I write EPF payable here uh, how much 4800 and EPF payable 4000 so EPF payable will have both balances right both uh, contributions of employer and employee fine so those are the transition we do have did they say anything about anything else no so we have to close the account salary control account is done salary account or salary and wages account will go to income statement epf payable so in the last video i have ex i have given an example with the opening balance and that amount is paid in the current month right so that kind of question they are testing in very recent papers right so they don't have they didn't give any opening balance there but in your paper, hopefully, they will give the opening balance for EPF table because that is a, the, the practical scenario, right? So in this question, since they don't, since they didn't give any opening balances, we don't need to, we don't need to think about it, we don't need to consider about it. So we are close this, 8,000, carried down 8,000, why carried down? Because this is payable liability. Salary, wages and advance account. So wages and advance account, 5,000 is the we have balance. It means what? the employee already took some advance and we are deducting from our salary from their salary in each month right therefore they supposed to give the opening balance if we are deducting something from their salary and to be transferred to wages advance account why we are doing so because this specific employee already took a loan took an advance or something like that but they didn't give any balance Therefore, you can't, you can't close, close this account, fine. Then housing loan again, same thing, right? This will be transferred to the specific, what you call specific bank account since some, since we, it is not related to us, we can close this. It is a liability. We have to transfer to the specific bank and loan again loan employee loan installment right so loan installment means what he already took a loan therefore there should be a balance here they didn't give the balance therefore you don't need to close this right and epf expense account will go to the what do you call income statement so this is one of the basic question related to the pay sheet and in this question what are the employee related expense gross salary epf expense and etf expense etf expense we don't have in this question therefore what are the employee related expense salary 39400 and epf expense 4800 do we need to consider too much on epf payable and epf payable in this question no why because they didn't give any opening balance if they give opening balance, what do you have to do you have to consider about what happened to that opening balance whether that is paid to the specific authority or not right so this is pretty straightforward question the important thing is the calculation how to calculate the values to be shown in the earnings column second question the requirements are first one is employee rated expense you should know what are the expenses related to employees what are those the salary epf expense and etf expense second one you had to prepare the ledger accounts so they gave uh, seven ledger accounts and the assets and liabilities as at 31 3 2020 so the assets and liabilities related to the question right so first question expense related to employee 
so whenever they asking such a question I, what i do is like i just record it and keep it the salary epf expense etf expense second one ledger accounts first one is salary control then salary payable account salary payable so this is not salary account then they ask the salary account as well i think right yeah salary account so what is salary account what is salary payable account salary account is where you are recording the gross salary salary payable payable account is where you are transferring net if you if you are not paying in the same month right fine then epf payable account ETF payable account, employee loan account, and EWF payable account. So employee loan account, then EWF, EWF payable account, which is employee welfare fund payable account, which is new. Fine. Then third one is assets and liabilities. So I'll write the third one here: assets and liabilities. Right. Again, you should know the journey entry for the each transaction related to the pay sheet. Right. So if you read the question, so they gave there are two employees and they gave a table there, earnings like basic salary, overtime allowances. and they gave the epf contribution etf contribution the deduction so we'll go from the basic right first one is what what is the entry you had record for the first transaction related to the pay sheet that is for the gross salary so what is the gross salary here so we have arun the first employee the gross salary is 120 and second employee we have the gross salary of 100 therefore your gross salary is 220 so you had record that entry first so salary account debit 220 20000 and salary control credit to 20000 so this is the information given for march and the requirement is also for march so therefore i just straight away take the amount from the table then what is the secondary you secondary you normally record the deduction so we'll go with the same order so deduction what we have we have ep uh, uh, employee welfare fund so that is new right but still they clearly mention that as a deduction so what is the total amount 4400 salary control debit ewf payable credit how much 4400 it means they are transferring some value from the employee salary to their welfare account right so 4400 salary control fine then they have given staff loan repayment 2400 loan the we have loan account so 2400 salary and control when are you recording when are you recording the entry in these accounts uh, specifically employee loan or ewf payable epf payable etf payable those accounts please leave one line here and record the transaction so like let's say for e w of payable also i will leave one line and record why because they will give the opening balance generally so when are they are giving the opening balance it is you know you had record some here right so you had better leave one line and record the transaction fine then they said membership fee 1000 again deduction so i'll write membership fee So, do we have a account for membership fee? No. Then we had record the net salary. So, before I go into that, I'll try to record the transaction from the table. So, in table we have EPF contribution of employee and employer. So, employee is how much? Twenty-two thousand. Salary control debit, EPF payable, and EPF payable credit. Salary control. So, I, again, I leave. Line there. 
then employer contribution double entry cpf expense account debit we will we can show later or else you can record now itself so epf expense how much 18 15 30 30 3 epf expense account debit we don't have to account for epf expense you can write now or you can write it later and payable account credit 33 epf Then they gave ETF contribution 3%. The amount also given as 6,600. So this is contributed by employer. What is the double entry for ETF contribution by employer? ETF expense account debit, ETF payable account credit. So I had recorded. There is no requirement to prepare the ETF expense account, but they have asked you to find the expenses related to employee. We already wrote the expenses related to employee. ETF expense is one of it. So I'm going to record there, the first entry 6,600 and the second entry in ETF payable account 6,600. I'll write here ETF expense. Fine. Then additional information. So first additional information, they gave information about two employees related to February. So the last month information which is not relevant or not related to the transaction we did. So we're going to leave it because we don't know why they gave the adjustment, right? Then next one. Every month salary will be paid in the following third day of the following month. So that we can do. So we close this. This is not paid. This will be paid in next month. Therefore, the amount will be transferred to salary payable. I right, saw so 220. One ninety two hundred, right? So salary payable, credit one ninety two hundred from salary control. Again, I left a line. Sometimes they may give some balances related to the salary payable, right? Then they said they mentioned it. They mentioned about the EPF, ETF, and EWGF. Again, they mentioned this EPF, ETF and EWGF will be paid in next month. So whenever they are giving adjustments like that, you have to consider, as I told like in earlier question, you have to consider why they gave that, right? So we just leave that. Then we do the next one. Staff loan balance is given. So staff loan balance, employee loan balance is an asset. So that will be in the debit side. How much? 36,000. Right. So can we do the first question or can we get the gross salary? Yes, 220,000. Right. So now the first additional information and then we left the third as well. Right. So we have to find why they gave the first additional information. So whenever they are giving some adjustments saying this will be paid in next month or the following month you have to consider about the opening balance means if it is if current month's amount will be paid in next month means what the last month's value the amount should be paid in this month right therefore you should probably have a balance in specific accounts right the first one the additional information they gave February gross salary 80 and 60. Then net salary 60 and 50. So the total net is 110. In February, did they pay the salary? Did they pay by cash to employee? No. Why? The salary will be paid in next month only. So the February salary will paid on will be paid on March. Therefore, my salary payable account will have an opening balance from february how much 110 and this will be paid in this month this will be paid in current month so so salary payable is done last month we had a balance of 110 and that is paid so now we have to find why they gave the gross salary. 
right? So EPF also same thing, right? So EPF also will be paid in the following month means this will be paid in the following month. 22,000 plus 33,000 will be paid in the following month means what? They should have an opening balance and that balance will be or should be paid in the current month. So that is a tricky point. So they are testing this exact scenario like several times in the very recent papers. Right? You should have an opening balance whenever they are saying something about transferring or paying in the following month. So you are going to have balance here and here as well. So how to find that? So how to find the opening balance of EPF payable and ETF payable means the payable amount of the last month, right? Fine. So in this question, in this table, they gave the EPF contribution of employer and employee and they didn't mention based on what? They didn't mention like whether it is based on what you call basic salary or based on the gross salary right so if we just check one of the calculation let's say let's say the first one 12,000 the contribution of employee so if we check that so 12,000 is 10 percentage on what on 120,000 so 120,000 is what in the question for Aaron 120,000 is the gross salary therefore in this question they have calculated the EPF on gross salary, right? Then you can check the other, other one also. Like if you check Jiva, then your gross is 100 and 10 percentage, so 10. So you can't say like this month they are calculating on gross and last month they calculated on basic. See, this is not like that. So if they are calculating on gross, they will follow the same, you know, across the years. Fine. Then I have to check the ETF, the how they calculate the ETF. Sometimes they may calculate the EPF on what you call gross and ETF on basic, right? So if I check my ETF, the amount is 3600. My gross is how much? 120 for Arun. So 3%, 120,000, 3%, how much? 3600. So that's also fine. So they are calculating EPF and ETF on what? On the gross amount. Right? Then they have EWF because in the adjustment they mentioned EWF also will be remitted the following month. Therefore, there is something related to the opening balance. So EWF I had to find. So EWF the balance is given as 2400 for Aaron for March. Amount is 120,000. They gave 2 percentage. The amount in this in gross is one gross salary is 120,000. Amount is 2 percentage. Therefore, that also match for the gross uh, gross salary. So they calculate the EWF also. They are calculating EWF also on the gross salary. So this is a critical question. Whenever they are giving something, or whenever they are saying this will be paid in next month. The salary will be paid in next month. EPF ETF will be paid in next month. You have to you have to think about the the last month transaction as well, right? So, in this question, they gave gross salary eighty thousand and sixty thousand. Therefore, total is one forty thousand. So, I had to find this balance. Balance is one. My gross is one forty for the last month. So EPF payable includes what? The contribution of employer and employee. So employer and employee. So 10 plus 15 percentage. So last month my gross is 140. 25 percentage was my contribution for the EPF payable by employer and employee. So 140, 70 and this is 30. And that is paid. Likewise, ETF payable. My amount is this. I put thirty-five. My amount is again one forty. Gross. 
and I had to find three percent because that is contributed only by the employer. So three percentage, how much? Four thousand two hundred. So I have balance of four thousand. And the double of payable, which is two percentage. So one forty thousand into two percentage. 2800 right so i found all the balances why i need the balance because they clearly mentioned it is paid in the current month so this is one this is two and this is three right so i found the balance and that is paid in this month 4200 and this also paid 2800 right then i close the account one by one salary payable is done salary account will transfer to income statement right so that is here then epf payable your balance will be anyway 55 why you already have a balance of 35 which is paid so you will have the balance due to this month only and again ETF payable your balance will be how much 6600 EWF payable your balance will be 4400 because you have paid 2800 employee loan your balance will be how much 30, 34 33 600 yeah, so we have to put the value here and balance it right the last requirement which is assets and liabilities related to the question so what is asset we have we have asset called employee loan 33600 and the liabilities so liabilities first one is salary payable how much 19200 then EPF payable. How much? Fifty-five thousand. Then ETF payable. Fifty-five thousand. Then welfare payable. Four thousand EWF payable. Four thousand. Right now we have a doubt like what happened to membership fee. So what is the double entry for that? Obviously salary control account debit because we are deducting from salary and membership fee account credit right. Now you should understand what does membership fee mean. So membership fee is something like employer is paying to the relevant authority on behalf of employee. Let's say if a member has some professional qualification on behalf of employee employer will pay like the annual membership fee at the beginning of the month or beginning of the year right so let's assume employer paid let's say 50,000 on behalf of employee to the relevant authority or relevant professional body right then what they will do then they will deduct from the salary therefore this membership fee considered as what it should be considered as asset same as what employee loan right in this question they didn't give the balance for the membership fee which is already given by the employer on behalf of employee to the specific professional body so if they give a balance for membership fee which is already given to the specific professional body that should be considered as asset as same as the employee loan right therefore if they give the balance of the membership fee the opening balance of membership fee that should be in the debit side then we are deducting from salary so after that, we'll get the closing balance and which should be shown under assets. So that's a new thing which has not been tested yet.
right so this is the one of the question which has all different scenarios with the opening balances and finding the opening balances so what is the important point whenever they are mentioning something about the payment on following month you have to consider about what happened in the last month as well if they don't give any information about last month no issues but if they give so you have to find the opening balance and you have to record the transaction for the payment because the last month amount will be paid in the current month after this i'll have the summary of the chapter which includes pay sheet journal entries recording in the ledger account and the important points of the chapter right so this is a summary of the chapter initially i have introduced the method of wages time basis and output basis time basis we are the business paid salary based on the number of hours employee worked and output basis business paid salary based on the output made or produced by the employees so time basis equals to number of hours worked into rate power output basis equals to number of units into the rate per unit then overtime payment overtime and payment in the sense they will allocate some hours to work but he worked additional hours so we are paying for that we are paying some additional payment for that additional salary for that that is what we call overtime payment so overtime payment equals to number of overtime hours into rate per overtime so in question in pay sheet we may have overtime rate for weekday and weekend separately fine then i have introduced the pro introduced the process flow a process flow is the entire concept map of the transaction related to pay sheet so the business would have the salary for the employee and they have the deduction so the first one is the gross salary and they have the deduction like a epf payable deduction of employee contribution and if they have already given a loan to employee then they will deduct the portion or deduct the repayment every month from the salary so that is what you call a employee loan deduction so they are deducting some and then the rest of the amount they will pay or they will pay later so a is the gross salary b is the b is the deduction and c is the net salary which they will pay later and this part is something related to the employer so d is epf contribution of employer e is etf contribution of employer so this amount which is there in the epf payable and etf payable will be passed or will be paid to the specific authority later so that is what i what i shown here in f1 and f2 right so that is the entire process map of the chapter so you should know or you should relate this with the journal entries third part i have divided the third part into three pay sheet journal entry and ledger account how to record in pay sheet then how we are transferring into journal how you are recording the double entry for each transaction in the pay sheet and then how you are transferring that values to the ledger account so pay sheet so i am relating the process flow to the pay sheet so when you are preparing the pay sheet what is important the number of columns so when you are preparing when you start preparing the pay sheet you have to check the question how many columns you have you should have in earnings and the deduction because if you make a mistake there you had to cut off the entire question the entire the entire pay sheet you prepared and you had to prepare again right so to avoid those issues you have to read the question identify how many columns you had to prepare then you have to start preparing the pay sheet right so first entry from pay sheet to journal first entry for the gross salary which is a double entry you should know for that the double entry is salary account debit or salary wages account debit salary wages control account credit then deduction in this example in this process law we do have two deduction first one is let's say employee loan so when you are deducting employee loan double entry is salary control account debit because salary control account is a temporary account where you are passing the gross salary and deducting the deduction related to the employee 
right so employee loan deduction double entry salary account lock on debit and employee loan account credit employee loan is what it means the business already gave a loan like long time back and they are deducting from every month salary right therefore employee loan is an asset account that will be covered in the last part of the chapter fine so they are deducting employee loan and epf payable epf payable deduction double entry in direction in the sense employee contribution double entry is salary control account debit epf payable account credit then net salary we do have two options we can pay by cash at the, at the end of the month or we'll pay in the next month so if you are paying by cash double entry is salary control account debit cash account credit if you are paying in the next month double entry is salary control account debit salary payable account credit therefore after we record the net entry net uh, net salary entry you will not have balance in the salary control account then d e f d and e are the epf contribution and etf contribution of employer double entry for the epf contribution of employer is epf expense account debit epf payable account credit why because this is contributed by the business therefore that is expense ETF contribution by employer double entry is ETF expense account debit, ETF payable account credit. Again, this is contributed by the business, therefore that is considered as an expense. So that is D and E. Then F, which is not related to the pay sheet, but you should know the entry for that. Why? Because in recent paper, they are testing that as well. So double entry when, they are pay, when you are paying the amount, or when you are remitting the amount to the specific authority, double entry is EPF payable account debit cash credit. ETF people account, ETF people account debit cash credit. Fine, that is F1 and F2. So that is about the journal. And from journal, you have you should know how to record in the ledger account. So when you are preparing ledger account, what is important? The opening balances. Whenever they are giving opening balances, you have to consider about it because whenever they are giving that, they will give some adjustments related to that. Sometimes they would say this is paid in the current month. Sometimes they would say three months, including current month will be paid at the end of the month like that. So you have to read the adjustment carefully whenever they are giving the opening balances. Then the important points. You should know how to calculate the wages, like basic salary over time based on the hours they are giving or like based on the product produced unit they are giving. And this point, if they don't mention anything about the calculation base, like whether it is gross salary or basic salary, you have to always go with the basic salary. But if they mention, if they specifically mention to calculate the EPF and ETF percentage on gross salary, you should go with that. The next point, employee loan account is an asset account. Why? Because business gave the loan to employee. Therefore, that should be considered as asset. Generally, we studied loan as a loan as a liabilities. Therefore, you may put the balance in the credit side. That is wrong. Employee loan should have a balance in the debit side because that is asset. Then the opening balance and the payment. So this point is important. Whenever they are giving your opening balance, you have to consider that and do the adjustment related to that. So if they give the opening balance, they may say that is paid in the current month. So you have to record the double entry for that specifically. EPF payable, ETF payable, and sometimes they may say employee welfare fund payable account as well. Further, they may say salary payable account as well. Right? Then membership fee, that's a new thing which they haven't tested yet. Membership fee means employer paid membership fee at the beginning of the year on behalf of the employee. Then what they will do is they will deduct from their salary in each in every month. It is same as the loan. So to whom they paid, they paid for the authority, they paid for the professional body related to the membership the employee has. Right, so then they will deduct like what they are doing for the employee loan. So they will deduct from each month's salary. And the last point is employee related expense, which includes three gross salary, EPF expense, and ETF expense. So this is the entire chapter of labor costing. I divide it into three method of wages, process flow, and I link the process flow to record the transaction. Right? Hope you guys understood. And in next video, I cover a new chapter. Thank you guys.